All right, this will be a very interesting and short uh, tutorial, and this is tutorial three on our lesson in hashing. In the previous uh, presentation, we discussed there are two ways to resolve collision. One of them is hashing with chaining, and the second method is open addressing. And we've already treated hashing with chaining in tutorial two. So today we are going to continue. But before we can discuss open addressing, there are concepts you need to know. For instance, you need to understand the concept of simple uniform hashing, a load factor, uh, universal hashing, and, and uh, a few more. So these will be very short lessons I'm going to teach you, and then we will be able to discuss open addressing. So this will be very easy, very clear. So just maybe take a pen and a paper so that you will be able to make notes. I recommend making notes because that helps you to stick what you are learning into your brain. So let's get started. And finally, please remember to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below this uh, video so that you get notified when I make new lessons. Remember also, if you have anything you want me to teach you, uh, please leave a comment telling me what you would like to learn or what you are having challenges on, on computer science or wherever, whatever topic is there in programming and stuff like that. All right, so let's get started. What actually is simple uniform hashing? Simple uniform hashing is an assumption. It says that each key is equally likely to be hashed into any slot of the table independent of the location of other keys. So what does all this mean? It simply says that the probability of an item hashing into this place is the same as the probability of an item hashing into this place and the same goes the same for all the slots. So let's assume you have n keys you want to hash and how many slots are here? You have m slots. So simple uniform hashing says that let me make this right. Say that the probability of an item hashing into this slot is 1 over m, which is the same as probability of an item hashing into this slot 1 over m. The same with this. So that is what is saying that each key is equally likely to be hashed into any slot independent of the location of other keys. So that is why it's called a probabilistic assumption. So it's saying that randomly keys are hashed into the hash table uh, randomly. That is the key words. So that makes it that we have this probability here. That means that the total probability, if you will, uh, will be n times 1 over m. And that brings me to my next item. Analysis of simple uniform hashing says that expected length of a chain for n slots, n slots, let me take my pen again, n slots in the table, sorry, n keys, sorry, and m slots. So we have n m slots, m slots here, and we have we want to hash n keys. Let's say k1, k2, k. N. So we have n keys and m slots. So the length of the chain will be given by n over m. And I already told you this before that it's something like 1 over m plus 1 over m plus 1 over m all the way into n. And that will give us n over m. Right? So what does this tell you? It tells you that if these two are equal, then everything hashes into the into one slot each. So if they are equal, you have n item hashing into m slots. It means everybody will be happy. Everything is okay. What if you have more keys? Let's say you have n keys and m slots. That is n keys are hashing into m slots. It means that a problem might arise. So I'm trying to explain to you what this load factor is all about. So we want the load factor to be alpha to be always uh, to be less because we we want m to be always bigger, the number of slots to be always bigger than the number of keys. So we want the load factor to be always uh, be small, to be less than one. So, but 
because as practically speaking that may not always be guaranteed and we are going to look at problems that may arise along the line and how to handle them so this term is known as the load factor the load factor is number of keys over number of slots so i'm going to write it out so that you know it number of keys divided by number of slots because we are going to encounter this load factor uh, along the line uh, in more places all right so running time this is something you need to know running time is order of one plus chain length okay so let's just proceed how do you choose hash functions so there are two methods of choosing hash functions we are going to discuss right now and these methods are things you just need to know they are not going to prove it but you need to know them so take a pen and a paper and write them down and the first one is called the division method the division method says that hash function of k is equal to k mod m where k is the key and m is the number of slots in the table the second method is the multiplication method and this is somewhat uh, not very simple formula because but it says hash function of k is equal to a dot k mod 2 to the power of w right shift w minus r so what are all these so just know that k is a key a is an integer w is a word length of the machine just like you have 64 bit 32 bit and so on and this operator is called the shift right operator and the relationship between the number of slots and r is m is equal to 2 to the power of r where you already know that m is the number of slots in the hash table so this brings an end to our discussion of simple uniform hashing so just know that simple uniform hashing says that the probability of an item hashing into a slot is equal to 1 over m and the likelihood of an item hashing into any slot is independent of whatever is in other slots in the hash table so we are going to now discuss universal hashing uh, but i'm going to continue with this in lesson four because we would like to keep these lessons very short i'd like to thank you for viewing i would like to encourage you to continue learning and I'll also remind you to subscribe and also like the video if it's been informative to you. I've been kind on the genius and I'm always there to teach you.